And so we're going to be joined in just a moment uh, by a panel led by our friend from MCC, Kristen Penn, um, which is fo and the panel is focused on data. Now, let me just say a quick word about Kristen, um, and then we're going to hear a or see a video uh, about one of uh, Feed the Future's private sector partners while the panel is uh, getting prepared and, and boarding the stage. Um, so Kristen has been involved in the creation of Feed the Future since the earliest days. And in that effort, I, I, think, I think she may be unique in being the only person in the Feed the Future family who has worked on Feed the Future across three different agencies. Uh, so as Feed the Future was being designed, we knew we needed to build a, a, a very rigorous monitoring and evaluation system into the effort. And so we looked for an expert on monitoring and evaluation and data systems and found Kristen Penn at MCC at the Millennium Challenge Corporation. She was detailed over to the State Department and worked in the office that I'm, I'm, I'm now leading at the State Department where she helped design the Feed the Future results framework that uh, um, was shown in one of the slides uh, earlier this morning. That's that set of, uh, that layering of goals and, and, and areas of progress that build up to progress in those two top line objectives of, of uh, inclusive ag sector led economic growth, uh, which relates to our poverty alleviation goal and uh, the, the improvement in nutrition, especially for women and children, um, which relates to our nutrition target that I mentioned earlier. So Kristen was behind that while she was working at State. Then she moved over to AID, to USAID, working in the Bureau for Food Security, again on, on detail. And she worked there to strengthen the monitoring and evaluation system for Feed the Future, and also to work on, on efforts to, to build data systems in our partner countries around the world. And so she's just the person to lead this panel um, on, on uh, uh, data and national data systems. And I'll let Kristen, when she comes up, uh, do the introductions of the panelists. Um, meanwhile, I hope you'll enjoy a quick video on one of our uh, private sector partners in Ethiopia. Thank you. delivered 280,000 quintals between 2009 and 2013. That's an achievement. A very good product.
In support of the Feed the Future program, the 2012 donors, governments, and private sector companies joined together to sign the new Alliance for Food Security and Nutrition, an agreement that commits all three entities to invest to improve the food security and nutrition in their respective countries. Guts Agro is a signatory under the new Alliance for Food Security and Nutrition and one of the first to complete its commitment. And beyond investment, the private sector has a great deal to offer in terms of skills and expertise. Whether it's improving the supply chain so fewer crops are spoiled on their way to market as Premium Foods is doing in Ghana, or training growers in certified seed production like Tan Seed is doing in Tanzania, or expanding the production and processing of highly nutritional foods like chickpeas and soybeans, as Guts Agro Industry is doing in Ethiopia, businesses often know how to do important things better and more cost effectively than anyone else. Um, hello, everybody. Um, it's really great to be here. Uh, I can't tell you how excited I was when the conference organizers called and said they were actually considering a plenary on building capacity and statistics. I, I got really excited, jumped up and did a happy dance, <laughs> and then proceeded to get online and buy 100 t-shirts printed with the phrase, keep calm and use statistics. I have 99 left. Anybody interested, I'll pay you to wear them. <laughs> but no, I'm really proud of Feed the Future's commitment to, to rigor. Rigor and evidence-based planning and decision-making. It's all gonna help us do our business better. Us as donors and implementers, but more importantly, our partner countries and, and their stakeholders. You know, without access to quality data and data analysis, very important decisions are being made in the dark by those who need data the most. Producers and ag biz need access to reliable sector performance data to know what to grow, when to sell, when to buy, when to hold. 
for policymakers to inform uh, reform priorities and budget expenditures. This data is crucial. For donors and implementers uh, to monitor progress um, and impact of our investments. There are supportive platforms um, promoting investments in agricultural statistics um, and rural statistics that Feed the Future has aligned with over the years. One such platform is called the UN Global Strategy to Improve Agriculture and Rural Statistics. It's housed with FAO globally, and it's managed by the African Development Bank for the, con for the continent. The purpose of this strategy is to provide a framework, uh, mainly for national systems, that enables them to produce and to apply basic data and information needed to guide decision making in this fast paced world. This strategy has three pillars to guide countries as they look at building up their capacity in this area. The first pillar is to promote a set of core data that countries collect to meet current and emerging demands. The second pillar is to integrate agriculture into the national statistical system uh, to satisfy the needs and demands of policymakers and other users who rely on comparable data across locations and over time. The third pillar, really important, is sustainability. Sustainability of the system through governance, capacity building, and demand. With USDA as our lead, Feed the Future has helped multiple countries now work through these pillars and meet the objectives of these pillars to create stronger statistical systems in their country. The African platform, CADAP, and its leadership have been really strong promoters of accountability. The principles and concepts of mutual accountability are intrinsic to the CADAP agenda and specifically to country leaders answering to its citizens for results. CADAP has called on their member countries to invest in the development of objective, credible, and up-to-date data and information for use in planning and monitoring and evaluation of agriculture and nutritional investments. And CADAP has called on member countries to hold joint sector reviews where stakeholders, public and private, come together to review and evaluate data representing sector performance, compare it against planned targets, and examine the effectiveness of both public and private investments in food security. Feed the Future has been a huge supporter of CADAP and will continue to do so especially in their area of accountability and has helped multiple countries, focus countries, launch joint sector reviews across the continent. Here today, we have 35 minutes, um, 35 joyful minutes, uh, where we plan to provide you an overview of how these platforms have been applied in one focus country, Tanzania. Uh, let me introduce my panelists. First, we have representing Tanzania and its National Bureau of Statistics, Titus Mwisomba, who is a statistician in the Department of Agriculture in the Bureau, and on behalf of Dr. Albina Chua, who is the head of the Bureau and was not able to make it, Titus is going to provide us um, an overview of the progress that you're making on building statistical capacity in your country. Then we'll have uh, Cheryl Christensen, who is Chief of the Food Security and Development Branch in the Market and Trade Economics Division, at USDA ERS, or Economic Research Service, who analyze uh, global food security conditions and conduct uh, research on factors affecting food security. Cheryl has been very involved in the Tanzania work from an ERS perspective and is going to provide us um, some thoughts on her experience there. Then we have Sharon Lavender, who is a mathematical statistician with the National Agricultural Statistics Service, NAS. Uh, Ms. Lavender is responsible for delivering agricultural statistics capacity development services to foreign statistical agencies in Africa and has been very involved in the Tanzania work and will provide us her perspective from NAS. And then we have Mary Hobbs, who is the Director for Economic Growth at the USAID mission in Tanzania. Uh, she has been a very su uh, strong supporter of this work, including funding, thank you. <laughs> and will provide us her perspective as a donor investing in these systems. Um, wow, I don't think I've said the word statistic that many times in my life <laughs> within this life. It's a really good day. <laughs> so um, listen, uh, we wanna save some time for Q&A, um, um, so let's be mindful of our, our time allotments. 
and uh, Titus, you're the one with the PowerPoint and you're first up. So please, thank you. Mm -hmm. Good afternoon. Uh, I'm glad to share with you the experience of Tanzania vision for improving agriculture statistics system. But first of all, I would like to recognize the presence of my permanent secretary, Minister of Agriculture, Food Security and Cooperative, Mama Kaduma, Her Excellency Mama Liberata eh, Mulamula, uh, Tanzania Ambassador to the United States of America, and uh, my colleague Tanzanians who came under different capacity to attend this meeting. Uh, this is the outline of my presentation, but uh, going to my introduction, uh, we recognize that uh, Tanzania uh, is one among the developing countries uh, who undertake the national develop, uh, development initiatives uh, using the results-based uh, agenda. But also we have uh, different uh, policies which are guiding us. Uh, some of them like uh, Tanzania Development Vision, that's 2025. We have national strategies for growth and reduction of poverty. We have also national development uh, plan. But also we have uh, MDG 2015 and other national sector development plans. Uh, Tanzania uh, I mean, the government of Tanzania recognizes the, the need for good and quality agriculture statistics to support regular and scheduled uh, uh, survey and census uh, to collect agricultural statistics. But also we are saying that uh, the government supports this kind of initiatives uh, to undertake a different uh, uh, surveys so that to get the, the quality data to improve the quality of agriculture statistics generally in the country. But apart from the survey and the census, uh, the country also obtains agriculture through the uh, agriculture routine data system. That is the country profile, Tanzania profile. We have our map and uh, flag, but uh, in terms of land, we have uh, a total of 364,898 uh, square miles. That is 945,087 kilometers square. So we have a lot land for agriculture. But in terms of population, we have uh, around 45 million people. Out of the f uh, for, uh, 45 million people, 75% uh, uh, of them, they are engaging in agriculture. So you can see the importance of the country uh, investing heavily on the agriculture sector. Comes to in terms of economic growth, we have, uh, our economic growth is uh, around 7%. That is according to 2013. But also we have the plan, specifically for statistics. And this plan is Tanzania Statistical Master Plan, uh, which started in 2011, and, it, and it, it will go up to 2016, and it has got its objective. One of these uh, objectives is institutional framework development, which is very, very important to have the quality of statistics. But also, as you know, we have the human uh, resource capacity development in order to have the qualified people who can underwork the work of data collection, processing, and so forth. But also, we are, the, 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 plan, the, the master plan is focusing on the statistical infrastructure, data development, dissemination, and the physical infrastructure and equipment to improve. We really need physical infrastructure and equipment so that to undertake our work, which can, at the end of the day, will provide quality statistics for users and so forth. But also we are saying that the sustainability, uh, the government has directed all MDAs uh, to mainstream statistical activities in the midterm expenditure framework. This is the business plan whereby all the MDAs have to go through in order to implement their activities. So this, this is one of the directives of the government so that to make sure that the uh, statistic activities have been taken uh, uh, in place for those who are uh, implementing the agriculture uh, statistics activities. And the, once we come to the sources of agriculture statistics, uh, these are the sources of agriculture statistics. We have the population and the housing census. We have also national agriculture sample census. We have uh, annual agriculture sample survey that is under development currently, under the assistance technically by USDA and NAS to come up with the improved methodology, how to collect data through this kind of annual agriculture sample survey. But also we have large scale farm survey and the national panel survey. All this kind of survey 
we have our modules to collect some information concerning the agriculture statistics. But also, apart from the general uh, master plan for statistics, which is taking care of all statistics, we have specific uh, uh, strategic plan for agriculture. And this is a new initiatives now coming in in order to harmonize household-based survey and the agriculture rural, agriculture rural data system. But to also uh, provide an overall a strategic framework for development uh, of strengthening agriculture statistics system. But also we say that through this strategic plan, we'll be able now to identify the critical areas so that the plan can come up and build on how to tackle these critical areas facing the agriculture statistical activity. But also we are saying that this framework will, uh, will, work, will be implemented uh, within five years plan, but also will build on, on the existing uh, work uh, which is going on in Tanzania. But also we are saying that other improvement on the agriculture statistics survey will also take place through this strategic plan. So we are saying that the strategic plan on agriculture will really take into consideration all activities, all the priority, priorities, uh, prioritized activities within our country concerning the agriculture statistics. And this is the objective. The problem, their objective is not uh, different from the, uh, the overall master plan, but also we are focusing on the legal and institution framework, uh, human development capacity, and also statistical infra infrastructure, as well as physical infrastructure and the equipment, which is very, very important to our work. And the rationale of having the strategic plan specifically for agriculture statistics based on three points. One is the changing context of statistics, but another one is increasing demand on statistics agriculture uh, data. As you can see, there are so many initiatives towards improving agriculture in Tanzania. Apart from the development partners, apart from the government, Apart from other stakeholders, all of them, they need quality statistics in order to gauge what they are doing in their uh, respective projects. So this is one of the, 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 the points which triggered us to have the strategic plan uh, specifically for agriculture. But also we need that plan so that we have the benchmarking, monitoring, evaluation of national development initiative and program, including the Feed the Future project. But also we are talking about the funding modality. We're saying that the SSP, that is the strategic plan, was fully nationally developed and owned, which means the government of Tanzania is committed on this. And we are saying that the plan will uh, be uh, undertaken by, uh, through 2015, 16, up to 2018, 19. And the cost of what is uh, being uh, described in the plan uh, is around, estimated around to be 16.8 million. So the ASSP will be funded under the umbrella of national statistics uh, system, and they will fall under the sector working group, whereby each uh, ministry will be able now to plan towards how to cover and implement the plan. But also we are saying that through the Tanzania Statistical Master Plan, the, uh, the, st the agriculture strategic plan will be also funded, but without forgetting the development partners, after going through, they will see where actually uh, it's uh, better for them to, to, to fund. The way forward is the development and to implement the integrated framework so that the, the national policy and other activities will be taken in care. The strategic plan will give us what kind of activities to be undertaken by the, the government. But the strategic plan has been developed in a participatory way in the sense that the government development partners, and uh, other stakeholders, private sector, have been working under one umbrella, and uh, they managed to come up with the priorities of activities which are really in the, clearly indicated in the plan. So it will be easy uh, for all of us to come on board and implement what has been uh, laid down in the strategic plan. So we are working all our work in a collaborative way, whereby the National Bureau of Statistics at the focal point working together with the other agriculture uh, sector lead ministries uh, uh, and, the and the private stakeholders as well who are focusing on the agriculture issues. But also we are saying the, uh, that the, the development of strategic document on agriculture statistics will pro provide a long-term development plan and also emphasize on the framework should be on the capacity building. 
these people who are engaged in data collection will be also, they need also to be uh, capacitated so that they will be able to perform different uh, activities within the agriculture sector. We are saying even other uh, kind of project like the uh, uh, core agriculture and the rural data survey should also adhere, should also be aligned to uh, agriculture statistics uh, uh, plan so that uh, it, can all, it can be easily for all of the stakeholders to understand and surely implement together. To underline my presentation, I'm saying that uh, both um, the commitment of the government is so, so important in order to uh, deliver what is underlined in the strategic plan. The government of Tanzania is really committed on that, and we think that the ownership of the document is under uh, both, I mean under the uh, government, uh, uh, development partners, and the private sector. Thank you very much for listening. Asante san. Excellent, excellent model of collaboration. Um, and just thank you so much for your good work. Panelists, going forward, we have two to three minutes. Um, so I'll, I'll ask Cheryl to make some short comments um, from USDA's Economic Research Service's involvement in the Tanzania effort. Thanks, Cheryl. Well, it's a pleasure to be here. And uh, I, like Kristen, am very excited about the chance to talk about the importance of statistics. I'm going to focus today very briefly on the use of statistics and try to look at the way in which the production of better statistics, was, which we've just talked about, fits into the framework of users of statistics. And the example that I'm going to focus on is a case in Tanzania, where after we did the initial assessment of the statistical system, we assessed the way in which ag statistics were used to develop a measure of food security. And what we found was that the way that the statistics were used to come up with food security requirements led to an overestimation of the amount of the key commodity maize that was required in the country. Because the statistics were not only themselves sometimes not available, but were used in a way that caused a bias, people were actually being given the signal, we need a lot of maize for food security, therefore we'll put a ban on the export of maize to neighboring countries, and we'll keep that within the country itself. This was a powerful disincentive to one of the main Feed the Future goals, which was increasing investment in agriculture and in marketing. Uh, we worked together with the USAID project to demonstrate the bias in the statistical system and the impact that that had on farmers. The government of Tanzania reversed its policy and does not impose export bans. Um, this was a major policy decision, but at the same time, the office of the prime minister said, we need to try to develop a more accurate measure of food security. And so ERS has been working with the Ministry of Agriculture, Food and Co-ops to develop a measure that is based on the difference in consumption of food across all the different regions to try to more accurately reflect how much maize is needed and how much other key commodities are needed and to try to give that information to the food security system that's operating in Tanzania. We are now in the last phase of doing training for people within the ministry and users, and we're looking forward to actually implementing a system that we believe will respond to the users' needs and also reinforce the need for more accurate and reliable statistics. So we're just delighted to have the opportunity to share that and to share the importance of the user's perspective, and with that, I'll stop and we'll move on to our next panel. <laughs> Thank you, Cheryl. Okay, for a NAS perspective in Tanzania, please, Cheryl. Yeah, the NAS involvement in Tanzania started as a joint mission with FAO and USDA under the global strategy in early 2012. Um, this brought forward uh, five different elements that were proposed and NAS would lead on two of them, to develop sampling frames and sample designs appropriate for generating agricultural statistics, 
and design and implement an annual agricultural sample survey. So the first step was um, creating a, a team in Tanzania known as the national team. And this was created by the government of Tanzania with members from the Ministry of Agriculture, Livestock, um, the equivalents in, in Zanzibar, the Ministry of Industry and Trade and Marketing, and it was led by the National Bureau of Statistics. Um, throughout 2013, we had many workshops um, on the various stages of the survey process. And with each workshop, progress was made in creating an annual agricultural sample survey, focusing on collecting information on the core food security agricultural production for the country. Um, last year, a cognitive pretest was conducted late in the year uh, for widespread questionnaire testing, as well as to investigate the effectiveness of an area point sampling methodology. So during that pretest, it was determined possible for enumerators to locate the points using GPS devices and then locating the person to talk to about that land. Um, moving forward, we have experts at NAS working with the NBS GIS unit to create an automated stratification process that will be used in the frame construction for a pilot later this year. Um, we're also using the population census enumerative areas that will allow us to link the agriculture and household surveys. So technical assistance is ongoing. The pilot I mentioned will be conducted later this year, an expansion to a countrywide survey in 2015 or 16, with the national team taking complete ownership by 2017. Thank you. Now, Mary, from a, a, a donor's perspective, um, you've been watching this process. You've provided finance for it. Um, be very interested in your perspective on the importance of this investment. Thanks, Ben. Um, from Anyway, and the National Bureau of Statistics has been a partner of the missions before. Uh, this is the premier statistical agency in the country. They do the demographic graphic health survey. And we gave two different grants to NBS to undertake the unified baseline survey for Feed the Future. So we know it's a good partner. Um, our immediate financing is with NAS, USDA NAS. And we're very excited that um, this coming fall they'll undertake the first annual agricultural sample survey. And they'll start in two of our pilot regions under Feed the Future in Morogoro and in Zanzibar. So why are we as a mission doing this? Um, first and foremost, we have our own self-interest. Um, in order for us to really assess the success of our programs, are we investing in the right things, in the right places, are we getting the results that we want? We need good data. Um, we get data from you know, our project level, but that's, you know, an annual, it doesn't really tell us the broader picture, it doesn't tell us what we don't know, it doesn't tell us what's happening in areas where we're not investing. So questions like how are farmers doing relative to others in the country? Um, how do we target our areas, our investments to the areas with the highest potential? And even fundamentally is um, increased agricultural productivity leading to poverty reduction and reduced stunting. It's very hard to answer those questions without good data. Um, also, we see it as a service to the broader donor community and of course to the government of Tanzania. Um, they need to know, is there sufficient production uh, in key areas or, and they need to know that this year. They don't need to know, was there sufficient production um, seven years ago when the last agricultural census took place. So there's already, you know, a lot of demand and 
use of, of some of the statistics that are coming out. Basically, you know, we see agricultural statistics as the grease that makes the system run smoothly. There is a lot of good information um, on prices. Uh, you know, there's use of mobile technology. A lot of the private sector, the farmers know about price information. What the private sector and farmers and the government don't know about is productivity information. So we see that this is really, um, you know, an investment that's going to pay off. Once this becomes institutionalized and there is a countrywide agricultural, annual agricultural sampling survey beginning in 2016, we think, uh, you know, this will be the gift that keeps giving. And we know that um, NBS has the capability and we're very glad that we're partnering with USDA who is able to help with the sample frames and the methodology. So yeah, we're proud to be a partner. Thank you. Thank you, thank you very much, Mary. Um, we can take some questions. Um, while you guys think about your questions, um, I have one I'd like to pose um, specifically to uh, Titus. You flashed up a price tag there of uh, what was it, 16.8 million? Now that's spread over five years, right? Mm -hmm. So that's about 2.2 2 million a year. Mm -hmm. So all of you that got sticker shock, it's not that expensive. But have you been approached, or what would you do if you were approached by your counterpart in another country that is looking at possibly investing, but is sitting on the fence, not quite ready to take that leap into assessing and building up their st uh, statistical capacity. What would you say to them to encourage them off the fence and, and to, to begin this journey? And why? Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's, uh, uh, thank you for that kind of question, but um, uh, it should be understood that uh, it's very, very important before uh, starting any kind of project to scan the current environment so that uh, to understand what is uh, really on the ground. And that will give you an opportunity to understand what are kind of the uh, critical areas and the challenges which you are going to face uh, before starting that kind of a project. So uh, if that kind of situation happens, uh, we would uh, encourage uh, uh, that kind of uh, development partner to look to the uh, available statistics within the uh, uh, our government offices and uh, which are giving the official statistics mm -hmm. before starting implementation of such kind of project. Uh, if such kind of uh, statistics are not available, uh, I mean, the, uh, depending on the specific areas of, I of his interest, then uh, we could ad advise to, uh, uh, before imp starting the implementation of the, pro of the project, to undertake the baseline, uh, some sort of the study uh, toward the specific areas so that to come up with the a data which we are really show him the, what is uh, transpiring on the ground. So we are saying that statistics is very, very important for all of us to understand that uh, uh, it will help us uh, to gauge uh, uh, the changes from the baseline towards where we are heading to. And it will help us uh, to understand uh, the, the impact of our objective whether the objective have been reached within mm -hmm. the specific area or not. Without statistics, how can we get that? So we are encouraging our development partners and all the stakeholders. Uh, it's very, very important to use the statistics for planning purposes and so forth. Yesterday, we heard that uh, there were some conflict in, uh, is it Ghana, north of Ghana. Mm -hmm. People were rejecting such kind of uh, new technology on the improved seeds, right. but to me, uh, it, it came to my mind that uh, uh, the project sh uh, uh, was supposed to have the, 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 I mean the project was supposed to scan the current environment, what is transpiring within the ground, so that to understand what is the perspective of the, um, of the current uh, uh, companies dealing with the seeds, what is the perspective of those who are going to use uh, those ca such kind of improved seeds. And this will help uh, uh, our project to improve and to be implemented in the objective manner. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Thanks. Do we have any questions out there? Um, there's a hand up over here and another hand here. Please introduce yourself. 
good morning. My name is Joseph Karugia. I work with RESAX, Regional Strategic Analysis and Knowledge Support System. Um, I would like to commend Tanzania for this uh, effort. I think this is a good uh, project in terms of improving statistics, in terms of uh, sustainably uh, availing data that we, we all need. I think um, we identify with the frustrations of uh, an availability of data, in especially in RESAX, as we support uh, CADEP monitoring and implementation. Um, I would like to hear a little more about uh, the efforts that the project is taking in reducing if what I might call duplication, even wastage, where we see different uh, program project implementers doing similar surveys, mm -hmm. undertaking uh, almost duplicating uh, at different times, um, uh, same surveys, collecting almost similar information, and um, in some cases, using the statistics authority itself um, uh, to do the work. Um, what, what efforts are you putting together, for example, to develop common indicators, agree with the different implementers that they can use uh, maybe one or two surveys rather than having 10 uh, <coughs> implementing agencies doing the same thing? Thank you. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Can I go ahead? Please. Uh, okay. <laughs> Uh, it's a nice question and comment. Actually, this is a, a, the situation has been uh, happening in our, most of our countries, especially developing countries. And the issue is there is a, a mislink of, of, of coordination between these institutions which are undertaking these different kinds of activities. But uh, we hope and we believe, and this is our vision, that uh, under the <coughs> agriculture strategic uh, uh, agriculture stat uh, statistics strategic plan, all the activities will be uh, under uh, one roof, and uh, it will be uh, an opportunity uh, for all the stakeholders before starting any kind of uh, uh, survey or any kind of project, they will visit uh, these uh, official offices like National Bureau of Statistics and uh, Agriculture Safety Guide Ministries to, make, to, to understand what are the available uh, statistics before uh, doing such kind of uh, uh, a project. Mm -hmm. So we are saying that uh, formally that was the case, but now we are trying, uh, and this is one of the objectives of the strategic plan, to reduce the overlapping of such kind of activities because uh, it's really wastage of resources uh, doing the same kind of activities which uh, simply you can uh, retrieve the information from other <coughs> institutions. And uh, uh, what we have said that we have to strengthen the coordination between the Ministry of Agriculture, uh, Agriculture Sector uh, Read Ministries, and the National Bureau of Statistics in such a way that once you visit the Ministry of Agriculture, they will simply tell you that this such kind of information is available. And mostly, most of our survey in Tanzania, we, we do it in collaboration with this Agriculture Sector Read Ministries. So once you, you visit uh, uh, the Minister of Agriculture, you'll be informed that this kind of information is available in our archives, whether in, in the soft copy or in the, uh, in the hard copy. So this is uh, how, and the, uh, this is the ra rationale of having the agriculture strategic, strategic plan in place. And that's why we're saying that all of us, all the stakeholders should focus on this kind of the strategic plan. So it will reduce the overlapping of what you are saying. So it is according to the high demand of agriculture statistics, that's why we have come up with a strategic plan. Mm -hmm. And soon, with the commitment of the government, the government of Tanzania is ready to have that strategic plan in place. And that's why it will reduce what you are referring to. Thank you. Okay. Mary, did you want to comment at all? No? Okay. There was another hand up here in the, in the middle of the room. Elena Hurtado from the Community Nutrition and Health Project in Guatemala. My comment is related to the previous comments, and it has to do uh, with the divide that I see between agricultural statistics and maybe nutrition and health statistics. And I think that we have to bring the concept of um, 
nutritionally sensitive or um, approach to statistics, um, being nutrition sensitive, because that would really uh, make to include uh, nutrition questions into agricultural surveys or even some other data like nutritional status or into nutritional service so, uh, surveys, some uh, agricultural questions, which would lead also to this less uh, collection of, of data, less overlapping, and also I think for a richer analysis of the data. Do Sharon or Cheryl, do you want to talk about the cross-ministerial collaboration on data and indicators across the agriculture and health or our work with DHS? Um, I could make just a couple comments and then someone else may want to add it. I mean, one of the things that we tried to do when we went to a, a more disaggregated commodity specific analysis of food security is be able to link up to nutritional issues. So when we look at the food baskets available and the calories from different sources, we also can look at the macronutrients and to a certain extent the micronutrients of the different regions that we're assessing. And that's built into the method of assessment. We've also been asked by the government of Tanzania if we could develop a nutritionally balanced, I know every nutritionist goes like this, nutritionally balanced food baskets so we could compare what people are consuming now against some standard. So we're very eager to engage uh, in moving forward on those kinds of initiatives. And uh, we have had conversations with nutritionists. We're also trying to coordinate with the DHS dietary and health surveys to get better information. So I think it's a very rich area. Um, and I think there are some steps that were being taken, but by no means uh, are we where we want to be. I would just add also um, at the mission, um, most of our impact indicators for Feed the Future are nutrition based. And we are already starting the dialogue looking at the uh, demographic health survey and trying to um, see if we might include some of the questions that could help us get at some of the results that we're aiming for um, when the next DHS is done, which is more or less at the same time as the end of the first phase of Feed the Future strategy. Excellent. Oh, yes. Uh, add is that the agriculture, annual agricultural sample survey that we're working on, um, we're using the population census enumerative areas to link with household surveys for nutrition and um, poverty indicators. So there will be a linking and, and it's ongoing work at the moment. Okay. Great. Thank you. Before we close, um, I know I mentioned these two platforms supporting agriculture and rural statistical capacity building. I want to put a shout out to a new mechanism that BFS, <laughs> BFS is funding. It's called CARDS, Core Agriculture and Rural Data Surveys, managed centrally, which they, whereby they will provide funding to help countries like Tanzania and others who have gone through this assessment process um, begin collecting on, on the, the sample frame um, to generate the, the core data. So I want to, so just uh, if you want more information about that program, um, please see Emily Hogue, who is here in the building. But I want to thank my panelists, uh, excellent exchange, um, great work a great model, um, hopefully it's scalable um, and, and replicable in other countries. Thank you. Thank you.